Open your Bibles, if you will, to uh, John chapter 9. John chapter 9, uh, starting in verse 1. And, uh, and as Jesus passed by, he saw the man which was blind uh, from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, uh, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. Uh, the night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Uh, when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with, uh, with the clay. He must have been at camp. <laughs> and he said unto him, uh, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. Uh, he went his way, therefore, and washed uh, and came seeing. Uh, the neighbors, there, uh, therefore, uh, and they which, uh, which had before seen him that, that was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Uh, some said, This is he. Others said, uh, He is like him. But he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes opened? He answered and said, A man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and I received sight. Let's uh, bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father, we thank you again for uh, certainly what we had an opportunity to hear with the teens, uh, going to um, just a, a teen rally, and Father, knowing that a bunch of youth across this country are being raised in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. There is uh, a whole bunch of young people that are ready to uh, take the torch, are ready to uh, continue this thing called Christianity, are ready to stand by this book, uh, and be faithful to their Lord and their Savior. Uh, what, a, what a grateful thing that is, and we thank you so much for it. Uh, appreciate just everybody that had a hand in um, uh, making this happen, Lord, from the, the counselors to the uh, folks who've uh, donated money to help with the cost, uh, people that are praying, uh, just folks that had kids so that there's somebody to go. And again, we're just grateful that, that you've allowed us to be uh, a part of this. Uh, for this morning here, just ask you to um, uh, settle our hearts for a little while here. Uh, just set aside the cares and uh, concerns of the world while we focus on the Word of God. Pray that you might touch each and every one of us, Father, as you did these teens this last weekend. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So here we have in uh, John chapter 9, uh, uh, again, a very famous passage of Scripture, one that I enjoy reading over and over again. Uh, but we have a, a beautiful picture of uh, uh, a lost sinner finding salvation. Amen. Uh, we see a person that's, uh, if you want to think about it this way, lost or saved, quite frankly, uh, that has no vision. The teens started giving their testimony, and I started, started thinking, uh-oh, they're going to steal my, my sermon before we ever even get started. Uh, we have a type of person that is lost or saved uh, with no vision, and they see the right path. What a blessing that is. We, uh, we see a person here in this, uh, in this passage of uh, a picture of somebody that is bound. And they're set free. Amen? If you're lost here this morning, I hope that you find the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope your eyes are opened and you see what salvation is all about. If you're saved this morning and you're at a place, uh, the valleys that they were talking about where you grow, I hope, I hope the Lord opens your eyes and you can find your way, amen, out of the valley, out of the turmoil that, uh, that men typically go through. Uh, if you're bound here this morning, if uh, the devil or your flesh has you bound, maybe by sin, maybe by circumstances, maybe by just life, I hope that your eyes are opened and you're ultimately set free. Amen? Uh, and if you're already saved and you can see your way, your eyes have been opened, listen, I hope that you'll simply rejoice in the Lord Jesus Christ and what he's done for you. Amen? Um, notice our text in verse 10 has this question, how were thine eyes opened? Well, verse 11 has the answer. Uh, a man named, to sum it up, a man named Jesus found me. Amen? Uh, he told me what to do. I did it. And it worked. It's really that simple. It's not complicated. You know the story uh, here in John chapter 9. You know how that uh, the Pharisees, you know, the ones that didn't believe, um, how they started arguing with him. And they started bringing up all kinds of, uh, you know, contentious things. And they started yelling things like, this man is not a God. Who is this guy you were talking to? Uh, you know, he did this on the Sabbath day. He's got to be unholy. 
Uh, we know that he's a sinner. God's not a sinner, but we know this guy is a sinner. And then they, they ca finally came to the conclusion, well, you weren't really blind to begin with, were you? It's not really you. Isn't that amazing? Um, just because they can't rejoice at somebody's eyes being opened, how they have to argue and, and fight and banter back at the goodness that God did to this man. Amen? Uh, they have to argue something. Why? Because they want to be the ones with all the attention. Amen? We pick up the story in uh, verse 28. And uh, they reviled him and said, Thou art his disciple, but we are Moses' disciple. Right? We know that God spake unto Moses. As for this fellow, we know not from whence he is. They're still at it. All these verses later. The man answered and said unto them, Why, herein is a marvelous thing. Herein is a marvelous thing. And that's actually what I titled my sermon this morning. Simply marvelous. <laughs> Simply marvelous. Now marvelous uh, is, you know, it's an, it's an adjective. It describes things. It's the definition. It means things like uh, causing great wonder. Uh, it means extraordinary. It means improbable or excellent or miraculous, supernatural, marvelous. This man was blind uh, from his birth according to verse 1. Think about that for a second. Uh, that means, folks, he didn't really even comprehend sight. He had never seen anything before. He didn't know any different. Um, it, it's not as if he could remember many, many years ago when he was a child uh, what the blue sky looked like or what his mother's face looked like. He had never had the pleasure of that experience. He had no vision, no reference to even understand what sight was. He had no concept of how to live a life with the comfort and the assurance that you and I take for granted as we walk down the street being able to just see where we're going. I know every once in a while we trip over something that we didn't see, but for the most part, brethren, we enjoy a life with vision yes. and sight. He had no concept of how beautiful this world can really be. If you're lost here this morning, that kind of describes you spiritually. Amen? If you've never trusted the Lord Jesus Christ, listen, it's, the, the picture is so, so vivid. Um, you're wandering around like a blind person when it comes to spiritual things, and you have no concept of what the sky is even like, what your mother's face looked like. You have no concept of things that, everyone, that spiritual uh, people that are born again take for granted because you're spiritually blind. Um, maybe you're saved here this morning and you remember those things from a while back. But now you find yourself in a valley. You find yourself being, uh, you know, being in a, a situation, being in turmoil where you kind of remember what it was like to have spiritual sight. Now, you're not lost. We believe in eternal security. But you kind of lost your way. You're groping in the dark trying to get through this, this life or trying to get through this crisis or get through this trouble. And you can't really see where you're going because spiritually your eyes aren't exercised. That's, that may be the case. But in either case, you're, the answer to the problem is obviously in verse 11. Jesus found me. Amen. He told me what to do. I did it. And it worked. It's, it's simple. It's simple. Uh, but some people are too busy finding arguments as to why it won't work, why it shouldn't work, why it couldn't have worked, why it's not really happening. Why there, there must be something. When they look at you and I, brethren, they look at you and I and they go, no, that's just a phase they're going through. Amen. You ever had your family? Oh, they're in a cult. Just, just let them go. They'll, get, they'll, grow, they'll outgrow it. You know what? I haven't outgrown it. 
which is nothing new. My wife says I haven't outgrown anything <laughs> except my old clothes. But, <laughs> but uh, growing up, no way. Um, but for someone that's followed it and has, they followed the Lord Jesus Christ, they received him as their Savior, and they gained sight for the first time. This guy goes down to the pool and he washes his eyes and he comes up out of that pool. Brethren, for the first time in his life, he could see what must that have been like. Oh, this is sight. Wow, that is a sky. I've always heard, I hope, I hope it was a nice, bright, shiny, shiny uh, day that day with a completely blue sky. You know, I'm sure the Lord gave him, I'm sure the Lord gave him that, that first instant when he had his sight, something amazing to look at. He looks around, he starts seeing people, he starts seeing buildings, he starts seeing things that before, you know, he's only maybe touched or tried to, in his dark mind, figure out what they were like. But now his eyes are open and he sees what's going on. It's an amazing thing. He probably describe, would choose to describe it as marvelous. Amen? As marvelous. Uh, let's look at a few things, uh, in my opinion, here, and we'll, we'll try to get going. I know that we're, uh, we're running a little late, but let's look at a few things, in my opinion, folks, that are just simply marvelous. Amen? When your eyes are open, there are a few things that you see that should be to you simply marvelous. Uh, the first one, folks, the first one may sound kind of strange, but look at verse uh, 30, John 9, 30. Um, the first thing, he says, the, the man answered and said unto him, Wherein, here, where herein is a marvelous thing, that ye know not from whence he is. <laughs> now that's a funny thing for a guy to say. You know what I think is marvelous? i tell you what I think is marvelous. Uh, I think it's marvelous how the world... Sometimes, unfortunately, a Christian can miss the greatness of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's a marvel. It's a wonder. How could, they, how could that be? It's, it's, it's a marvel. Um, now, that can be taken, you know, one of two ways. It can be taken this way. Uh, I'm in great wonder as how you could miss this. Here's a guy that's been blind his whole life. He, uh, he meets Jesus along the road. And despite what anybody else says, he follows him, he listens to him, he goes down to the pool, he washes his eyes, and folks, he can see the blue sky. He can see maybe his parents. He can see people walking down the road, and you know he's jumping and shouting and screaming and having a grand old time. And he's thrilled about what has just been given to him. And he comes across these bunch of Pharisees, and they're looking at him, and they're trying to shut him down, and, and they're, you know, they're hounding him, and... And I'm sure at, at, you know, at one level, he's wondering, why on earth wouldn't you guys be excited about this? I wonder, I wonder why, you know, how, this is so great. How could you miss it? You ever felt that way when you're trying to witness to somebody? How could you miss this thing? Is so, this thing that I have in Jesus Christ, this salvation is so great. How could, how could you possibly miss it? It's a marvel. It's a wonder. I don't understand. The evidence is right here before you. I'm here. I'm, I'm sitting here. My eyes are opened. How could you possibly miss it? You ever have the Lord do something for you? And you know that it was the Lord working in your life? Amen. And you become just kind of so thrilled about it. And, you, you know, you relish in it. And, you, you, you know, you try to tell somebody and they look at you like you're half crazy. You're like, oh, yeah, you just, yeah, come on. Yeah, that was just good luck. <laughs> right. No. This, this guy knew what it was like to have his eyes opened by the Lord Jesus Christ. You can look around, brethren, you can see the Lord doing that in other people's lives as well, right? Amen. I mean, you, see, you look at these teens. <laughs> You're sitting here watching these teens come up. I, I remember when they were, you know, this tall. Okay, some of them were that tall, but some of them were this tall. <laughs> and I remember how some, how uh, sometimes they were withdrawn, timid, shy, and, you know, some of them weren't, but some of them were. <laughs> and now I look at them up here, and I'm going, man, that's an amazing thing. You know what happened? Their eyes were opened. They got a little bit older. That's a marvelous thing, right? 
And, and, this, and this blind man is probably wondering at, at some level, why can't they see it? Now that may be the case, um, but I think the statement was a little more like this. <laughs> and, and as uh, you, I mean, you read the passage and you tell me if this is not kind of the jest uh, that you get when you actually read the passage. Uh, I think it was a little more like this. I'm fed up with you guys arguing. <laughs> I just got my sight. You guys are sitting here telling me this isn't true, but listen, I, I just saw people walking back here. And, and now you guys are arguing with me and you're telling me that what I have in the Lord Jesus Christ is not really real and there's something wrong with it. You're telling me this, this man was a, was a sinner? Uh, you're telling me that he was not of God? You're, you're arguing because it was done on the Sabbath? All these things? Um, he goes, I'm, I'm fed up with your arguing. I'm fed up because this is later on the chapter. They've been after him for a while now. I think his attitude was a little bit, I'm fed up with you and you're arguing and questioning and you know what? I'm kind of glad you don't see. <laughs> well, that's rough. I'm kind of glad you don't see. You see, the, one, of the, one of the definitions of marvelous is excellent. Right? I think it's excellent that you don't see. Why would he say that? Well, they obviously didn't want to believe. Right? They weren't interested in what this guy was now experiencing sight for the first time. He's looking at them going, you've chosen to reject the very thing that just gave me my sight. I think it's marvelous that you can't see. And because you've rejected him, you've chosen not to listen to him. I think, I think it's marvelous. I think, well, herein is a marvelous thing that you know not from whence he is. He was mocking him almost. So Psalm 92 says this, O Lord, how great are thy works, and thy thoughts are very deep. But it says in, uh, in verse 6, A brutish man knoweth not, neither doth a fool understand this. You know what this blind man ran into along the way? He ran into a bunch of brutish men, a bunch of fools who didn't want to believe. And he was somebody that had just had his eyes opened. And he says, here it is a marvelous thing. A marvelous thing that you don't know him. I do. Now, understand, you know, this is not, this is not a, a I'm glad you're going to hell type of thing. Right? That's not the, that's not the message you're certainly trying to relay at all. Um, but, doesn't the Lord in, in Luke say this? In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent. The Lord had the same outlook on folks rejecting the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, on rejecting him, that this blind man had. It explains that a little bit. Why, you know, folks, every, one of these days, every one of us has to stand before God. Right? The Bible says, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. One of these days, each and every man, woman, child on this planet is going to have to stand before God, and we're going to be judged on those things. And when that day comes, there are going to be those that have chosen to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, like this blind man. There are going to be those that had their eyes opened, like this blind man. There are going to be those that rejoice because their eyes were open. They received Jesus Christ as their Savior like this blind man. And then there's going to be a whole bunch of people that fought against it. That argued against it. That railed against it. There's going to be a whole bunch of people that thought you Christians really just need to be, uh, you know, done away with. What do you think the is the Lord's opinion at the final judgment. You know what it is? I thank thee that you've hid these things from the, quote, wise and prudent. That's what they thought they were. But you've revealed it unto these babes here. You know, the Lord says, I'm glad. I'm glad that these people right here chose to believe. And as far as these that rejected, 
probably had the same outlook this blind man did. I can't believe you're angry at something that was so great for me. I don't know if there's anybody here that's lost or anybody watching that's lost. You've never trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior. But folks, one of these days, the Lord's going to be judge. And you're going to be in cuffs waiting for judgment. And you know what the Lord's looking for in that day? He's looking for people that have believed. Amen. And the ones that haven't, after all that he's done for you, the ones that haven't, there's, there's no hope. There's no hope. Death and hell were cast into the lake of fire, which burneth with fire and brimstone forevermore. Amen. There's, no, there's no hope. It's the second death. Listen, it is, a, it is a marvelous thing that some men, that the world doesn't know Jesus. The world is the devil's, right? It's a wonder. I don't know why they don't know him. I wish they would. I wish they would get as excited about us seeing as, the, as you know, as we should be about this blind man seeing. But they don't. And in that respect, it's a marvelous thing. A, I wonder why it even happens. But on the other hand, after all the Lord Jesus Christ did, there is no second chance. There is no second chance. And this man was sitting there looking at that going, mm -mm -mm -mm. folks, you got right here in front of you these eyes that see and you're choosing to reject this man, Jesus, because you, what's your argument? It's a marvelous thing that the world doesn't know him. I wonder why. I'm not glad for it. I'm not happy about it. But it is a marvelous thing. I tell you, what else is marvelous? Uh, you look at that verse. The man answered and said unto him, why herein is a marvelous thing that ye know not from whence he is. And yet, he hath opened mine eyes. Ladies and gentlemen, you're here this morning. Listen, you're here this morning. I know most of you have been born again. You've been saved. Isn't it a marvelous thing that the Lord Jesus Christ stepped down in your life at one point in time, showed you salvation, and your eyes were opened? Amen. Teens, isn't it a great thing that your parents brought you up in a Christian home, brought you to church? And there was probably mornings where you thought, how oh, do I really got to go? And, and, and then Sunday school class, they're always fun back there. But then, you know, preaching service, and you're like, oh, and, then, and then somewhere along the way, it clicked. Somewhere along the way, it clicked. And that thing of salvation realized, and your eyes were opened. Amen? Somewhere along the way, you realize, whoa, this is real. This is, I'm, I'm, I think it's a miraculous thing that the Lord looked down and opened my eyes. I mean, I'm glad he opened your eyes, but I'm really glad he opened my eyes. Amen? It is a marvelous thing that he, uh, that he opened my eyes. It's a marvelous thing what the Lord has done for you. You come to a church like this, you look around, you know what you got? You got friends. You got people that will be an encouragement and a help to you. You see these teens get up here, you see them growing, you watch them, you know, uh, turn into young men, young women, and, and their, their heart is on the Lord and their eyes are on the Lord. It is a marvelous thing that the Lord reaches down amongst all this wickedness in the world and still has a desire to open our eyes. I mean, he took great care of you and me. He sent, he sent the apostle Paul down uh, in, in the book of Acts. Paul talks about it delivering them from the people uh, and from the Gentiles unto whom I now send thee to open their eyes. The Lord Jesus Christ went to such great extent that he called out Paul, right, Saul, changed him to Paul, and he sent him to us Gentiles for what? For the purpose of opening our eyes that we could see the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what the Lord did for us. I mean, he, he did everything he could, and then to top it all off, he, wind, he winds up on a, on a tree, cursed, beaten, whipped, bloody, sacrificing his life for us. Why? Because he wanted us to have our eyes opened. I'm grateful 
I'm grateful the eyes, that my eyes have been opened. In Ephesians 1.18, it says, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. You know what I'm glad, folks? I'm glad I can look at this world, no matter how crazy it gets, I can read the newspaper or the news stories, and I can look at it, and my eyes are enlightened. I see it for what it is, not for what they want me to think it is. <laughs> Amen? I know what's really happening. I know where this thing is really going. I, especially today, I am so grateful that the Lord took the time to send somebody, gave me a book that opens my eyes because, brethren, I've got great comfort now that my eyes are opened. I can't imagine going through COVID with my eyes spiritually being closed, either lost or just ignorant of what God was doing, right? But you go through this and, and, and the Lord, you know, the Lord enlightens you and he opens your eyes and you look at things in a completely different perspective, brethren. Amen. It's not bad. It's annoying. It's frustrating. It makes me long for old, the old days, the, you know, the good old days. 375 days ago. <laughs> That's probably just about right. <laughs> You know, the good old days, people, oh, you old fogies, you're thinking, no, 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 man, the old, good old days were like, uh, uh, you know, 375 days ago. So even if you're six here today, you remember the good old days. <laughs> if you're 86, well, you remember a lot of good old days. I'm grateful the, lo I'm grateful the Lord has opened my eyes so that I can see. Amen? Brethren, I, I am so, I'm so thankful. I, I'm like that blind guy. I'm sitting there and, and my eyes are open and I'm going, Lord, thank you. Thank you for just, just enlightening me so that I can keep the right perspective on things. So that I realize all the craziness this world is going through and all the craziness world governments are going through, they're just but a, for a moment, a drop in the bucket because my eyes see the real thing. <laughs> Amen? It's a shame. It's a shame if your eyes haven't been opened. I tell you another thing, I've, this is uh, really going, I, I'm, I, think it's, uh, I think it's marvelous that he is the only door. You take a look at John 10, I'm, I'm gonna run through this, you can turn there if you'd like, but uh, you read through John 10, <clears throat> and, and the Lord starts off, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door uh, into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. And he goes on in that chapter, and you're familiar with John chapter 10, the Lord goes on. I'm familiar, I, am, I am, think it's marvelous that the Lord Jesus Christ is the only door. I, I think it's marvelous that the world doesn't understand what we have. I think it's marvelous that he opened my eyes. But brethren, I think it's marvelous that he's the only door. Listen, um, the Lord, you understand, you guys do understand this, right? The Lord could have made it. So that all religions wound up at God. But he didn't. The Lord could have made it. He could have opened the gates so wide that everybody could get in. But he didn't. The Lord, the Lord narrowed that thing down and, and brought us the way, right, which leadeth unto destruction. Many there be, uh, many, uh, there be which go in thereat. Straight is the gate, narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. You know what? When, you st when I sit and, back and think about it, I think that's a marvelous thing. I think it's a marvelous thing that he narrowed this thing down and, and, and he made it so that it's a very simple decision. It's not complicated. Jesus Christ or anything else. Amen? Um, I mean, you know, you look at, um, you look at the verse... In John 10, 24, then came the Jews round about him and they're mad at him and they're angry because he healed this blind guy and they still have this thing going on. And uh, <clears throat> they, the Jews came round about him and said unto him, how long dost thou make us doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. <laughs> this guy sees. <laughs> right? Tell us plainly. You know what people claim to want? They claim to want a plain, simple answer. 
You ever been there and you're in a dilemma and you're trying to make a decision and you don't know which way to go and, uh, and you, you say to yourself, I just, I wish it was easier to decide. This one's easy. Jesus Christ is the only door. It's easy to decide. And they come to him and they say, hey, wait, you're confusing us. It's too complicated. If you're the Christ, just tell us plainly. So he obliged. Then Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not. See, those people that are in the world, that it's a marvelous thing that they don't understand, they claim to want to know the answer. But when they're given the answer, the truth is they reject it. It's not, the problem is not they're horrible people. The problem is they reject the only door that works. I think it's a marvelous thing that Jesus Christ is the, the only door. And that makes people angry. It makes them so angry. Take a look at, um, um, oh, I don't know, look at verse 31. Well, 29, we know that God spake unto Moses. Oops, I'm in 10, no wonder. Take a look at uh, verse 24. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, uh, answered them, I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. Right? I and my Father are one. Verse 30, and look at verse 31. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Here we are, brethren. This guy has just been made whole. He can see. A great miracle has been done. And these people are angry about it. And the Lord Jesus Christ is trying to tell them, hey, listen, I'm the only door. You can't get there any other way. Everybody that tries to get in some other way is a thief and a robber. And they get angry at him and they want to kill him. I think it's marvelous that God gives us such a clear choice. Amen. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. I think that word again is pretty telling. You know what we're in the midst of, brethren? This is why you got to be careful with what you put on Facebook. <laughs> We're in the middle of a world that hates the Lord Jesus Christ. And they're looking time and time again for any opportunity to take him down and to kill him. Here's the Lord Jesus Christ. He just got through doing a miracle. He just had this man see. He just got through telling them plainly who he was, which is what they asked for. And when he tells them that, they get angry at him and they just want to kill him. Again. There are some people, there are some of you out there, no matter what's said, you'll never turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. You're like these guys. You'll find every argument in the world to reject him. And if you had opportunity, you would like to kill him. You say, no, I wouldn't do that. Careful. <laughs> Careful, because when you get angry, when you get upset about something, uh, some of those restraints that you think you have go away. And the Lord Jesus Christ set it up so that he is the only door. And in order to get salvation, in order to escape in eternity in hell, you have to choose him. Amen. There's no other way. Amen. There is no other way. There is none other name uh, under heaven given among men whereby ye must be saved. Amen? I think it's marvelous that the Lord Jesus Christ set it up so that it's plain, it's simple, it's easy. Choose Jesus Christ or go another way. I think it's, I think it's a marvelous thing. Um, I really need to, to dr go on here, but I think it's a marvelous thing. You get down to verse uh, chapter 11, the next chapter over, and you, you read about Lazarus. Again, I won't take the time to go through uh, the whole story. You know the, the story, but Lazarus is about ready to die. They tell Jesus he's sick. And the Lord delays for two days, it says, in verse 6. 
And Martha, understandably, is upset. Verse 21, if, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But the Lord has reasons for what he does. Amen? The Lord has reasons for what he does. It says, it says in John 11, verse 14, or verse 4, I'm sorry. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Listen. I think it's a marvelous thing that Jesus Christ allows trials. I don't like going through them. I don't particularly like having to endure them. But here's the Lord Jesus Christ. They tell him about Lazarus. And he waits for two days. And when he says this, he said, uh, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. And then Lazarus dies. But Jesus Christ knows he's not really dead. I'll bring him back up. He's okay. Listen, listen. It is a marvelous thing when the Lord allows you to go through a trial. It's for his glory. The question is this. Will we go through it like Mary and Martha? Or will we go through it some other way? Because what he's doing is a marvelous thing. Now, from Mary and Martha's perspective, huh, that's not so great. Their brother just died, right? It's sad. Yes, it is. It's painful. Yes, it is. Do they understand what's going on? No, they don't. But I noticed something. I noticed something about Martha. As soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. It is a miraculous, uh, it's a marvelous thing that the Lord allows us to go through trials. And here's Martha and Mary going through this trial, and they just watch their brother die. And the Lord just decided to delay two days while this is happening. Now they have a right to be angry, bitter. Lord, why didn't you fix this? But when Martha hears the Lord's coming, even though she's in the midst of this trial, even though everything has gone wrong, she turns and she runs to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen? In the midst of the trial, she runs to her Savior. That's how you handle those trying times. Now, Mar Mary struggled a little bit at first. Mary sat still in the house, right? But you know what? Martha went and saw the Lord. Martha comes back and tells Mary, uh, <clears throat> the Lord's calling for you. And you know what's going to happen when you go through struggles and trials, when the Lord allows you, when he, when he gives you the marvelous privilege of going through a trial, you're either going to run to him as soon as you hear about him, or maybe you're going to sit back like Mary and you just kind of get stuck for a little while. But Martha goes, and then she comes back to Mary, and she says, Mary, Mary, he calleth for you. He calleth for you. And Mary, even though her initial response was to be, right? Martha comes back to her and says, Mary, he calleth for thee. And that got to her heart. And she got up and she ran to him. As a Christian, those are both very acceptable ways to handle this whole thing. The Lord understands when you're going through a trial why it may be difficult. And he didn't blast Mary for not running right away like Martha did. But I know this. I know it's a marvelous thing that he allows you to go through those trials. And even when you struggle with them, he still calls you like he did Mary. He sees you struggling and he still calls you. He sees you back at the house and you don't want to go because you're hurt, you're in pain, and, and he still calls you. And the best thing you can do is to come running. 
Sometimes it helps just to know the Lord's there calling you. But I also noticed this. It was only after both Martha and Mary ran to him that he raised Lazarus from the dead. All right? What, I, what do I learn from that? Okay. Hey, no matter how bad the trial is, the Lord's got a reason. It's a marvelous thing that he allows us to go through those trials. And he wants us to come to him. Even if we think we've been defeated. Even if Martha, that's what Mary and Martha thought. Well, he's dead. He's gone. Roll the stone away. Oh, Lord, it's been four days. He stinks. Uh, even at that point, the Lord says, come to me. And when you do that, when you do that, he raised Lazarus from the dead. Brings us to the final point. One of the things that is marvelous. I, know, I think it's marvelous that he'll deliver me from death. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with his grave clothes. His face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto them, loose him and let him go. Brethren, it is marvelous. It is marvelous that when I trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior, I was delivered from death. Amen. Permanently. I was delivered from death. You say, oh, some people still die. I know. Like Lazarus for a little bit. <laughs> and then he takes me out of here. And brethren, I don't have to worry about it ever again. Amen. I think it's marvelous. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Right? Just some marvelous things, and I'm done here. Simply marvelous. There's some things, reading through John chapter 9, 10, 11, that are simply marvelous. One of them, folks, is the world doesn't know him. Your Savior, my Savior, the world doesn't know him. I think we should do everything we can to change that. I think our heart ought to be at a place where we change that. But you've got to admit, it is, it's, it's, it's a marvelous thing. They don't know him. How come? Because they had hearts like the Pharisees. I think it's a marvelous thing that he opened my eyes. I'm so glad I can see. Brethren, he's given me so much by having my eyes opened. He's enlightened me. He's given me a new perspective on everything in this planet. I don't think of things the way the world thinks of things. I'm glad he opened my eyes for salvation. I'm glad he opened my eyes just in, in enlightenment. I'm glad that he's the only door. I'm glad I don't have to decide, you know, oh, ho-hum, oh, let's see, I think I'll be a, a Buddhist. And I'll find nirvana. I'll find enlightenment, and that's good enough. I'm so glad he made it so there's a clear-cut decision. You want sins forgiven? You want eternity in heaven? You want to escape hell? There's one door. Go through the door. It's not complicated. It's simple. Unfortunately, many people never find that. They're looking to get there some other way. I'm glad he's the only door. I'm glad he allows trials. As much as I hate them, as much as I probably whine and moan and groan and complain, just like you, I'm glad the Lord's taken me through the trials. And I'm glad I can look back and see how he's given me success. And I'm glad when it's all said and done, I don't have to worry about death. I don't have to worry about death. I know she's not here today, but I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad that if the Lord tarries and I live to be 89, I want to be like Mola Jane. She told... Uh, <laughs> She told my, my daughter, she goes, I think I might be getting a little old. <laughs> and her eyes are on the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know what? That's all that matters to her. I'm glad. However long the Lord chooses to lead me down this earth, I'm glad in the end he's going to deliver me from death. Amen. I find those things simply marvelous. <laughs> Amen? Let's bow for a word of prayer. Father, we thank you again for... A chance to be here on a Sunday morning.
uh, you are a great God and Father I know that uh, um, this, this man, this blind man uh, while he's a picture of a, a lot of different things and we can make a lot of different applications. Uh, Father, for him, the first thing that happened was he just listened to you, he obeyed you, and you restored his sight. Uh, Father, I'm, I'm so grateful that you do that. I'm so grateful that you've done that for us spiritually when we trusted your son, Lord Jesus Christ. Pray you'd help us to have our eyes open like this man had his eyes opened as we live in this world. Help us to remember that, Father, you do some marvelous, marvelous things. And I'm glad that I can be a part of them. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.